How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, and Stitcher. So, download this episode, unplug from life, and dive all into episode 9 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in. Today's show is called, If You Look, Then You Shall Find. Now, unlike the other people in your life, I actually care about what you think. So meet me halfway, take a tiny moment, and give my podcast and each episode a review rating. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes, the third eye that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life, well, some of us at least. Moreover, I hope to provide you with gut-wrenching laughter and a touch of wisdom. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding. And I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. Now, as always, I, your host Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. This episode is explosive. I am talking about immigration, how Donald Trump is going to find his next immigrant mail order bride. The alt-right movement now requires a racial purity blood test before admitting new members. Are you white enough to march in the movement? Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here and you know I want you here. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. How are you guys? I hope you are well. I've had a very long and tiring week. Actually, I haven't been feeling so well, so I wasn't able to go to the gym and work out as much as I like this week. I actually missed my Bikram yoga class. And for those of you that do not know anything about Bikram, Bikram is a 90 minute, 26 posture class doing yoga poses in a 106 degree room. Yes, I said 106 degrees for 90 minutes doing 26 postures. I started about a year ago and the amount of coochie sweat that comes off my body is unbloody believable. If the Nile River has another drought, all they have to do is call my black ass and I will set shit straight. Why do I take Bikram? It's difficult. It's a challenge. And um, I like difficult, challenging things. So it helps. It's like a moving meditation. That's what they call it. But unfortunately, I missed it this week. So, you know, I'm normally in the gym three days a week. I'm yoga, hot yoga one day a week. And I do hot, high intensity Pilates for one day a week. Shit, I'm 40. I got to keep it tight. I can't keep my chocolate MILF status without working out this much. And if those of you that don't know about MILF, Google it. It's M I L F. And I am a chocolate MILF. Hello and goodbye. Now, when I said goodbye, 
I hope you motherfuckers didn't log off and think I was done with the show. It was just a figure of speech. Right now, what I'm going to start talking about is legal versus illegal immigrants um, and how our president, Donald Trump, what he thinks and what he feels about that. Recently, he was giving an interview or speech about diversity visas. And diversity visas are basically a lottery that selects people to come to the U.S. Now, these people are selected from other countries and they come here or we have this lottery because they are underrepresented in this nation of ours, the USA, as a whole. So the U.S., you know, we strive ourselves on maintaining diversity and we work to make sure that happens by allowing people to come into our country with diversity visas. Now, he feels very strongly about illegal immigrants, which is why he wants to build a wall. But he also feels very strongly about legal immigrants. And it's really funny to me because his wives are immigrants. So where will he find his fourth wife if he has a problem with legal and illegal immigration? How is he going to produce another hate spewing, ignorant spawn like little Trump minion? You can't do it. The man has a proclivity, a fetish for foreign brides. And unless he has some form of flight amnesia, no woman in the U.S. is going to want his old tales of the crypt ass. So he's going to have to go overseas to someone who can't understand him, doesn't want to understand him, and probably will stand being in his presence due to his money and his power. Now, Donald Trump said during this interview or speech that due to these diversity visa lottery, that these countries, they give us their worst people. Yes, he said they give us their worst people. He says he puts they put these lottery tickets in a bin and they're picking the worst of the worst. And then the people that win the lottery in their countries, they basically say, congratulations, you're going to the U.S. He doesn't trust immigrants, legal or illegal. Then what the fuck is he marrying his wives for if he can't trust them? Like, what is he doing, really? It's clear that his wife can barely understand him or English because she doesn't speak much, which is probably how he likes it. Russian mail order brides. But most of us wouldn't be here um, if it wasn't for migration, immigrating here to this nation. So what exactly is going on? I think personally, he wants to extract the United States from the world, like remove our country and just put us on another planet without any colors or anyone that's different. So he wants to have a bubble of a world. That is not feasible in any way, shape, or form. Because if you go back in history, you go back in time, you can see how different nations and societies, how they lived. And some of them live very poorly before trade, before trade routes opened up. Because not every nation, not every land can produce everything that's needed for their society. And that is how the world has been able to progress. Because people have traveled and gone to different places, foreign places, and brought back food, spices, clothing, knowledge. So if you don't have legal or illegal immigrants and you want to rid the nation of anything or anyone that's different from your image, you're basically setting the U.S. up for some form, a major form of extinction. Now, because he has this point of view, you know, I think it's very um, entitled is ignorant and is very entitled. And I think there's a good bunch of us here in this country, and I don't care what color you are, who are comfortable and very entitled. Because 
you don't, you have to understand how things work on a macro, macro meaning on a bigger scale, a larger scale than the front of your nose to see how you are benefiting from what society is giving you today, whether it be the internet, computers, cell phone, your car, all that happens because of exchanging of knowledge and ideas, which comes from people in other places. I mean, shit, we're not the only motherfucking smart people in this world. There are other people who are interested in science, research, innovation, creativity. So how we are able to advance on a whole as a humans is because we are working together. We're fighting together also, but we're working together. Now, when I say we're a bunch of self-entitled and comfortable people, I want to be clear about one thing. I am speaking about myself also. I mean, look at me. If I have to wait in a line that's five deep, I lose my shit. My life is on demand with a lot of non-DVR moments. That's what I said. I have a lot of non-DVR moments, which means I don't want that shit that I'm doing or saying being recorded because it shows that I am crazy as fuck and I don't want a record of that shit. Do you hear me? Don't want a record. Matter of fact, I probably shouldn't be doing this podcast either because this is not working in my favor, but you catch my point. So I am also comfortable and self-entitled, but I also have enough sense to realize the value that conflict and friction cause, it it causes innovation and great things to happen. We wouldn't be, well, I personally wouldn't be riding around on my red G550. And if you guys don't know what that is, that is a Mercedes G wagon. And I love my gas guzzling, purring, roaring baby. Okay. We wouldn't have things like that if it wasn't for immigration and sharing of ideas. I mean, shit, my car would still be in motherfucking Germany right about now instead of in my garage, which when I pull out, I'm pimping each and every time. So he can't be pissing on my shit because how am I going to get my next G550 if I can't get it from overseas? Because ain't motherfuckers ain't making it here. I do not want a Cadillac. I want a Mercedes G550. That motherfucker eats, fuck eats. It uses gas like it's fucking air. I need my car. So he can't be pissing on shit, messing with immigration policies because I need the people to come here and we go over there and we share things. I need that. Okay. Now back to Trump. He has had three wives. Now talk about a dirty curved dick motherfucker. He's had three wives and I'm pretty sure his base, a good portion of them are really religious. Now, I know they're turning a blind eye to his dirty dick ass and how he has had multiple marriages and divorces, but people choose to see what they want to see. But he's had three wives. His first wife was Ivana Trump. She was from Czechoslovakia. His second wife, Marla Maples. She was all American white bread from Georgia. Okay, cool. Give him some credit. Made in America. Good. Third wife, Melania Trump. She's from Slovenia. First wife, Czechoslovakia. Third wife from Slovenia. Now, if you guys don't know, those are not cities or states within the United States. Okay. They are overseas. They are near Russia. Hence his strong affinity for Russia. Now, two thirds of his wives, ex-wives, wives, are foreigners. 66% of his wives are foreigners. His mother, Marianne McLeod, was from a small village in Scotland. Now, Scotland is predominantly white, so maybe Donald Lump for brains got confused and thought the shit was close enough to be a part of the USA. I don't know. And that's why he has forgotten his heritage and realized that he, his family also were immigrants, legal or illegal. I do not know. I cannot say, but the fact is they were immigrants. So how is a motherfucker who basically family is quite recent to this country, give or take a hundred years 
is going to have a problem with legal and illegal immigration. Because if his, his forefathers, his grandfather didn't come here, if someone like him was president, his grandfather would not, his father would not have been able to come here and make the millions of dollars that they made so that he could give Donald Trump a million dollars to start his life off. Yes, that's what I said. Donald Trump didn't have to work hard for his money. Someone else did. Nothing wrong with that. It's cool. But this motherfucker acts like he understands the hardworking blue collar Americans in this country. This motherfucker doesn't even pick the dirt out of his nails and he doesn't wipe the piss drip from the tip of his dick when he's finished peeing. So how the fuck does he know what it takes to earn, really earn money off of your back, off of his backs? He actually knows very well how to earn money off of other people's backs. So let me clarify that statement. He doesn't know what it means because he was given a million dollars back in the day. That means when they were still horses and buggies and carriages, that's when his, his ass was young back then, you know, a hundred years ago, that's when he was given a million dollars. If you actually did the math, that's a shitload of money. That is what set him up to be where he is today. So if it wasn't for his father, his grandfather, he would be a nobody. Hence why he acts the way he does. He's a self-entitled prick. That's what he is. Completely and utterly. Now, most of his ancestors are from Germany. His grandfather came here to the country and he anglicized their names. What does anglicize mean? It means he took Frederick, which is the German version, and turned it to Frederick or Fred, just so that they could pass and have an easier life and a greater chance of success here in America. Now, why did they want to anglicize their names? Because uh, the English... The Anglos probably had money, connections, and power, which like they do now, but back then. So they wanted a greater chance to be successful. So what did they do? They changed their accents. They changed their name. They changed their mannerism. And sneaky bastards, basically, they pass for Anglos, and that is how they get ahead. So who the fuck does he think he's fooling when he's talking about foreigners, Actually, he is more of a foreigner than I am. I mean, shit, my people came here on the fucking slave ships in the 1600s. So technically, I am more American than Trump. Even the Native Americans and a few Caucasians and a boatload of chocolate chip peeps, my chocolate chip peeps that came on a slave ship, run this country, the great country of ours. It's our country. So if he wants to talk about immigration and immigrants, he should take a very long, hard look in the mirror at himself because actually we should boot his turncoat ass out of this country because he's a fraud. He's a fake. Foreigners built this nation, legal foreigners, illegal foreigners and slaves. We all played a part to create the world that we live in today. The circumstances for some were not ideal, were very poor and bad. But overall, a lot of us played a major contributing part to what we have today. Despite race, creed, color, sex, all of us, the collective whole. So he has no right to sit here and talk about distrust immigrants, legal or illegal. If most of us check our genealogy charts, Most people, if not all, came here on a goddamn boat until recently when the airplanes were basically uh, made and we were able to fly in. All of us came on a motherfucking boat, some willingly, some unwillingly. But the fact is, most of us arrived on a motherfucking boat. So when people are sitting here talking about we need to get rid of folks, no, what we need to do is stick an apple in your mouth, put a tape around it, Yes, bind and gag his ass and throw him over in the corner and have him shut the fuck up. Because conflict and differences, like I said before, breed innovation. And innovation is where the money's at, where the progress is at, where there's a better quality of life and a higher standard of living. And I don't know about your ass. I'm not trying to go back to living in motherfucking wood cabins, fucking riding around on horses and buggies and fucking chopping around in mud. I don't do that. As I said before, 
I drive a Mercedes G550 and the bitch is red and it eats gas like it's breathing air. That's what I do. So if I have no plans of going back, I'm not going back to Africa. I'm not going to any motherfucking place. I'm going to say where I am and I'm going to do that in my gas guzzling luxury vehicle. So his bastard ass needs to shut the fuck up and get the fuck over himself. I was reading an article and it basically talked about how white nationalists tapped into decades of pent up racism to spark a movement. I'm like, what's this? I mean, a movement to what? I mean, where are they trying to go? What exactly are they trying to do? Pent up racism. Racism has never gone anywhere. It's always been here. So what do you mean pent up racism? Racism has existed in America since the dawn of its time, since the birth of this nation. So the shit hasn't been pent up. It's been here. It's been lingering. The only difference is you're not able to tie a motherfucker up to a pickup truck and drag him across the road. That's the difference. Or you're not able to lynch a person and hang him from the tree. But essentially... If you get rid of that, racism has never left. More people have become loving and open and tolerant. But those who are racist have always been racist. Oh, I guess they feel that they haven't been able to beat a motherfucker out in public and not and get away with it. That's the problem. They're not able to whip someone's ass and get away with it and, th- and think it's okay. You know, I understand. Your problem is you're not able to abuse someone mentally, phys- mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And that right has been taken away from you. So yeah, I mean, if you're pissed up and angry and you want to whoop somebody's motherfucking ass. And that right has been taken away from you. Kind of how Child Protective Services looks after children who are being abused. And, you know, they come in and they take the child, they rescue the child from the bastard ass parents that are abusing them. Yeah, I could see because, you know, miserable people, they love to have a punching bag, a uh, um, uh, someone to step on, to trot upon. So, yeah, I guess, you know, I am wrong. You do have a lot of pent up frustration. You have been missing out on years of beating people's asses who can't fight back because you got other motherfuckers holding them down because if those other motherfuckers weren't hurting them down, your ass would be dragged, whipped and kicked and not the other way around. So, you know what? I got you. I feel you. You got pent up anger. It's cool. But ultimately, ultimately with this movement, what's the goal? Are you trying to put my sexy black ass? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. My sexy brown ass back in chains. You can't do that. I am too fine and too motherfucking smart to be put back in chains. So what exactly are you trying to achieve? We already have the First Amendment. So you can say whatever the fuck you want to say. Do you want to create another amendment? Which means if you feel like putting your foot up somebody's ass, you have the right to do so at your leisure. Because guess what, bitch? If you can do it, then other people are going to be able to do it. A law is not going to be created for white nationalists to allow them to put their foot up anybody's ass and think that people are going to lay down and take that shit. You see, that time has passed. There was a time in U.S. history where you could treat women, gay people, colored people differently. You could basically punch them in the motherfucking mouth, knock their front teeth out, and basically drag their ass anywhere you wanted to. There was a period of time that you could do that. But my love, that time is gone. So if you go around trying to put your foot up somebody's ass, you may find your own foot up your ass. You got one foot of yours up your ass and then the other foot of yours will be in your motherfucking mouth. So you can try it if you want to, but I can guarantee you, you have a high chance of failure. I mean, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is ultimately the problem? I mean, why does the world not make sense? If you check history books, everyone, mostly everyone, has come to the USA for a better life. Now, my ancestors, they didn't have a choice. They were fooled. They were duped. But that's neither here nor there. But in general, no matter where you are in this world, people want to have a happy, fulfilling life. 
where they feel like they have a future for themselves today and for their future generations. Everyone just wants a better life. So what the fuck is the problem? If everyone wants a better way of life and there's enough resources in this world for everyone, of course, we can't see it because you have a lot of greedy ass motherfuckers who aren't sharing, but that's again, beside the point. If there's enough for everyone, what exactly is your goddamn problem? You know what I think it is? I think there's always, there's a level of self entitlement because of all the advances that we've achieved in the last half a century or so. There's a lot of sons of bitches out there who just seem to think that they're owed something. You see, when people came to America or went to a new place, they went there because they were hungry. They were going to make something for themselves and they were going to do it from their own blood, sweat and tears. But nowadays people are just goddamn lazy. They just think that, you know what? The government should be helping me. But the same motherfuckers say we need to get rid of these uh, uh, welfare entitlement programs because these lazy ass people over there, they don't deserve it. So why is it that people over here that are poor and need help? don't deserve the assistance of the government. But your ass over here thinks that your rights are being taken away and you should have the support of the government. Your shit is stupid. It doesn't make logical sense at all. Now your anger is real. I get it. We all have anger about something or someone, whatever. Your anger's real. Where your anger comes from, you need to figure that shit out. Was it yours? Or was it planted in you by someone else? Again, that's your problem. But I'm talking about any and everyone. And this has nothing to do with color. Everyone wants a better life. And everyone wants an advantage over someone else to get that better life. This has nothing to do with colors. Color of your skin, who you love, who you don't love. It has nothing to do with that. So if you're feeling marginalized, you're feeling cheated. That means there's something that you feel you should have that you don't have access to. Now, if we all take a step back, I think all of us can relate to that, where we want to be at another place or another station in life. And there's obstacles and hindrances that are in our way, whether it be another person, a situation, or our own goddamn selves. We all have that problem. But this alt-right movement feels marginalized. They feel marginalized. Marginalized. Lots of people are and have been marginalized for different reasons. So what makes your fucking cause or case different or special? Like, seriously, what makes your marginalization different or better than someone else's that you feel the need, like what happened in Charlottesville, to run someone over and kill them. Like, what makes you more special than the person next to you? Because if I skinned every motherfucker in this world, we all bleed red. All of us have beating hearts. So what makes your marginalization so much better or so much special that you need a movement. We all should be marching for the same goddamn movement because humans have been marginalized for the dawns of time since, since mankind. That is the, what the fuck humans do. There's always going to be some shitty motherfucker preaching some shit that is lies, that's false, that sounds good, that sounds true to some people, that sparks some anger and causes them to want to do some stupid shit, which is why slavery and every other horrific thing as far as what tri- contributed to wars in this world why it exists because there's some type of marginalization selfish 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 that's what i have to say this alt right movement it's just selfish what makes this alt right movement different than any other activist group out there the environmentalists that were trying to protect us from corporations that were basically polluting our lands, our air, our sea. What, what, what made them different? What made them a domestic terrorist? What made the Black Panthers 
domestic terrorists. What makes this alt-right movement different? I think they're also domestic terrorists. And I think they should be handled as such because what they're trying to incite, they're trying to incite, and they already have, violence. And when they incite violence, they want the other side to react. And when the other side reacts, then they can step up and say, see, they're acting like monkeys. See, they're not civilized. See, they don't have religion. They are not better than us. It's all trickery. It's trickery and it's mockery at its best. Wrong is wrong no matter what. And what we have to stop doing is we have to stop falling for these tricks, for f- falling for the tricks from these buffoons, because that's what they are. They're fucking buffoons. They're fools and they're buffoons. They're two bit full buffo- buffoons. That's what they are. They are doing the most insane shit to tap into a deep insecurity, a deep sadness, a deep fear within others. And when people are scared or they're angry, they act without thinking. That's all these people are doing. They're pulling strings. They're poking buttons to get you to go the fuck off. And then when you go the fuck off on their ass, they're going to sit back and say, say, see, that is why they should not be in this country. See, that is why we should have laws to keep people segregated. See, that is why we cannot have uh, uh, diverse neighborhoods because of behaviors like this. It's all hocus pocus. It's all games. And when the rest of us can see it for what it is, all you can do is sit back and laugh at these bitch ass, bitch ass fools. That's what they are. But I'm on to you. And other people are on to you. You know what I tell my children? Just because someone says some shit doesn't make it true. Just because someone says something doesn't mean it makes it your truth. If you don't give someone's opinion life, then it dies. It's ashes to ashes. It's dust to dust. Everyone's entitled to an opinion, but you're entitled not to give a fuck. It doesn't matter. They can say whatever the fuck they want to say. They can do whatever the fuck they want to do, but they're wrong. Because let me tell you, White lives matter. Black lives matter. All lives matter. All lives matter. All. Because when the Twin Towers, when they were basically falling from the sky and people were jumping out of those buildings for their life and others needed help and blood transfusions, you think people are sitting around saying, white lives matter, we're only helping white people. Oh, black lives matter, we're only helping black people. No, we came together as a nation and we supported each other. Do you think one of these alt movements, white nationalists, if they needed a blood transfusion and the only person that can give them a blood transfusion that matches them is a black person, do you think this motherfucker's gonna say, let me die? I don't want this monkey's blood. I don't want this color person's blood. You think that's what they're going to say? Hell no, they're not going to say. They're going to say, you know what? Fuck the blood. I don't give a fuck what color the person it comes from. Red is red. Give me that blood. I want my life. So how stupid do we look when we're sitting here arguing about some stupid ass shit as far as marginalization? If you really want to look outside your white picket fence, you can turn on the TV and go to the news. And you can see constant examples of people being marginalized all over this world. So if you have a problem with marginalization, you should be fighting for all, not just your selfish asses. You see, now I'm motherfucking pissed because the struggle is real for everyone. Everyone has something wrong, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual issues. We are not on this planet without a struggle. We are here to struggle, to advance, to make ourselves better. That is where growth occurs through a struggle. So whatever religion you have, whatever religious, religious texts that you rely on, you can see the struggle is real within those sacred texts. So who the fuck are you to think that you are not supposed to struggle in this world, but everyone else is trying to get ahead in life? Lazy ass bastards. That's what it comes down to. Lazy, lazy ass bastards. 
Now, Kyle Bristol, he is an alt-right activist. He's also an attorney for his high-profile white nationalist friends, brothers, sisters, whatever you want to call them. And he said large corporations, the government, and academia relentlessly attack their views, their way of life, their traditional values. And because of all corporations, the government and academia, that has prompted the growth of this movement, this alt-right movement. This alt-right movement can grow all the fuck it wants. You can't stop a weed from growing just like you can't stop a rose from growing. Grow. The fact is, grow. What do you think you're going to do? You think you're going to put black people back in chains? What do you think you're going to do? You think you're going to spend uh, send the Latinos back o- over the border? What the fuck do you think you're going to achieve? What do you think you're going to achieve? You think you're going to brainwash people? So you catch people in vulnerable moments in their lives and you convince them that some so-called motherfucking boogeyman, and keep in mind, this boogeyman has many faces. It's like the many-faced God from Game of Thrones. This boogeyman really doesn't have a name, really, really doesn't have a home, really doesn't have a resident. The face motherfucking changes when it's convenient for them. Let's get, let's get this shit real. So what are you going to do? Huh? Grow. Grow the fuck all you want. He's talking about middle America is rallying to the flag of the alt-right. You know why they're rallying? Because their way of life has been threatened and is being threatened for environmental reasons. Farming is not as lucrative as it used to be. And due to our farming techniques, the land is not as good as it used to be. So folks in the middle of America, they're struggling. They're hungry. They want a way to provide for their families. And guess what? If a colored Democratic motherfucker came along and made that shit happen for them, guess what they'll do? They will go and they will follow behind that person. They will say, well, you know, I don't like the chocolate chip, but shit, he's putting food on my table and he's putting food on my table for future generations. They're going to follow it. So I don't give a fuck what you think, what you do. You can keep having your rallies. You can keep having your movement because there's always going to be some hateful ass spawns walking the earth. You know, you can't have night without day. You can't have yes without no. You can't have on without off. So you're not a threat. You're a threat to yourself, but you're not a threat. And if medical America wants to rally behind you, I just want you to know it's temporary. It's fleeting. You will never have them for long. Because deep down, people actually know what is right and what is wrong. Now, this guy, he's saying, you know, older generations, this lawyer for the alt-right movement, this activist, he's saying older generations recognize that America is no longer the place that it once was Or could be and wants to reclaim the America that was lost. Shit. I don't want to reclaim that shit. The reason why it lost is because it wasn't motherfucking good. Nobody wants to keep shit. Let me tell you this. When your ass go to shit in the morning or whenever the fuck you do it. Do you keep that shit? No, you don't want it. You want to flush it down the goddamn toilet as soon as motherfucking possible because that shit stinks. So why do these people from these older generation think that people won't go around keeping some shit that don't work? If it's broke, you need to fix it. If it's broke, it's going to be tossed aside. Whatever it is that they're trying to reclaim, that time has passed. So if you got a problem with it, either you need to die soon or get the fuck over it because it's not going to happen again. You won't see my pretty brown ass, brown ass back in chains ever motherfucking again. You can't do anything about that. That time has passed. If you're trying to incite race wars, good luck. Good luck. Because over here, there's a lot more people who are loving, open, and accepting. And they they come in all different colors and shapes. You are the minority. Your views are the minority. No one wants to go back to a time where people were beaten and stripped of every bit of human decency. And you want to talk about getting back to old times? All these people that suffered, it was all due to money. It was due to profits. Your way of life that you're talking about, that you're trying to go back to, it was nothing. It was a fake. It was a mirage. All the bullshit that you believe You were told because you're dumb. 
the end of the day, it was about money. People were getting rich off of that way of life. So they told all you other stupid pawns, whatever the fuck they thought you would believe to keep what they were doing going. That is why the 1% is the 1%, why they're rich. Because they know exactly what to say and what to do to get the other people to fall in line, whatever bullshit they're perpetrating, which is what's going on with our presidency now. You can't see the wood for the trees. You don't know what the fuck is going on. All you know is that the shit sounds right. Okay, maybe you have one less strip of bacon on your table. And back in the day, you asked to have more. Well, you would have a lot more. If you have motherfuckers working for free and you're working them 22 hours out of 24 hours, guess what? You would be living a grand life. But all that, those slavery and injustices, it's about money. And I think what your problem is, it's about money also. But you're not going back. So whatever you're trying to reclaim, nobody fucking wants that. Because if you start, if we all start going back in time, reclaiming what was, we would still be living in motherfucking caves and wiping our ass with leaves. Some of us, at least. Back in the day, other civilizations were advanced. And they weren't wiping their asses with leaves. So think very long and hard about what you're saying. You want to go back to America having a whole bunch of factories? That was a time and a day for that. The reason why those factories existed and so many people were employed is because the computer was not invented. And they needed human labor to produce cars and all those other wonderful things that America had. But due to technology, technology decreased the cost of a car and a lot of things that you own. And that is why you own it today. Because back in time where humans were producing cars, you wouldn't be able to afford the button on the radio tuning thing inside your car because of labor costs. So thanks to computers... And people from all over the world producing these technologies, your flat ass can get into a car and drive it to Costco or McDonald's and live the life that you're leading. So before you start talking about some shit that you don't understand, check your history books, get educated and get your facts straight because you sound, you're not, but you sound stupid as hell. These alt-right Activist group also talk about how they are proud to be white. I say be proud. You should be. I mean, but all of these biblical loving folks forgot what the Bible says about pride. Pride is a sin. So you can't preach about traditional conservative religious values and you're sitting around marching saying proud 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 be proud but we all know what the hell happens with pride because it is a sin now i know one of your leaders have told you that pride is not a sin but you need to go back and you need to check your books because all over the damn place And you say you're God-fearing. If you're God-fearing, anyone that's scared of the Lord's vengeance treads very, very carefully. Very carefully. And you know what the Lord does to people with pride. So this movement of yours, which is based off of pride, is a sin. It's a sin in your own mind. It's a sin in your own world. It's a sin in your own religious text. Tell me which sacred, which sacred religious book says that pride is okay. The Bible, the Gita, none of them. You won't find a religious text, a sacred spiritual text that says pride is a virtue. See, I'm not sure if you've been to a ceremony in a while. But God or whatever higher consciousness you believe in destroys madness. What's madness? It's an imbalance. And the higher power always 
restores balance and order. Now, here's some funny shit. I remember a time in U.S. history when there was avid racism, but it wasn't avid avid racism towards people like me, you know, black people, African-Americans, people of color. It was toward the Irish, the Italians, the Russians, the Jews. There was crazy racism toward white people. Like, where are you people from? Where is your, what, where, where have you left your goddamn brains? Like, do you not go to school? Have you not been educated? Or do you have a memory of convenience? Racism has been directed towards all types and all kinds. And let me give you some raw, bareback truth. Let's just say your alt-right movement happens, just happens to get rid of all colored people or people who are different. Let's just say, you know, we can all have dreams, maybe crackhead dreams, maybe wishful thinking dreams, maybe meth head heroin dreams, but hey, we're all entitled to dreams. You people will do a 180 turn on one another. You see, Hate is hate. Ignorance is ignorance. And it always needs something to feed off of. Right now, you're looking at legal immigrants, illegal immigrants, technology, the government, the fucking boogeyman, Santa Claus, fuck Bugs Bunny, whoever the case may be, whoever the bug, whoever your, uh, your, uh, boogeyman is at this time, that's who you are. But what is going to happen? If you are successful, because hateful, putrid people will start hating against one another, your own kind. The people that you think you look like right now, you will start turning on one another. The fact is, you can't cut it in this world. And then someone new can. And you got a problem with it. Your problem is the fact that you can't cut it in this world. Because if you were made of true American grit, that's what I said. If you were made of true American grit, which is hardworking, innovative, you wouldn't be in this situation now, would you? You wouldn't be talking about marginalization because you would be sitting on top, but you're not, which is why you're complaining. And it's okay. We're all not blessed with the same things. And we have to take the cards we're dealt and make the best out of it. And instead of you playing the hand that you're dealt and trying to get a better hand, you too busy worrying about some of my other motherfucking card game instead of getting your shit straight. You're wasting time. And time is limited. But let's just say, you get your wish. All darkies, colored people are gone. All chocolate chips are gone and we know how much you love chocolate. So technically it will never motherfucking happen, but Hey, I'm playing to you right now. I'm pandering to you. So work with me. All of us are gone. Any and everything that you don't like, all of us are gone. Now you're looking at all these alt-right movement people, all the people you've converted over, all the original people, all you motherfuckers are together. Now what's going to happen? You have another crazy motherfucker that comes and says, Look, only people with red hair and freckles are the chosen ones. Yep, that's what I said. People with red hair and freckles are the chosen ones. They are the chosen ones. They are the right ones. They are the elite. So if you don't have red hair and freckles, your ass must go. You must die. You can't be here. This alt-right movement is a form of extremism. It's like a flesh eating disease. It will never stop. It will just keep looking for a new target. Hateful people unite while it's convenient. And then you guys, I can guarantee you, you will turn on one another because history repeats itself because humans keep doing stupid ass shit. People ain't reading in the books. They're not going to motherfucking school. I don't know what the problem is, but If you were educated, you wouldn't be doing this and you would understand how detrimental and how you're putting a lot of things in jeopardy. 
So you want to be proud to be white? Be proud. But, but I got some real shit to talk to you about. You're proud to be white. Okay. Do a damn DNA test. Prove it. You see, there's a lot of you motherfuckers around here walking around, passing, because you look a certain way, saying I'm proud to be right, proud to be white, traditional white values, traditional white values. Prove the shit. Because there's been a lot of fucking going on in this country. And I can tell you, vanilla wasn't just fucking vanilla. Chocolate and vanilla were getting it on. So you're proud to be white? Prove it. Prove that you deserve to be a part of the alt-right movement. Because a lot of you bitch ass are frauds. Complete and utter frauds. Do you got the balls to prove that you are white, 100% white? Is your spine erect and strong enough to prove your purity? Can you? Will you? No, the fuck you won't. You're not going to do it because you are an imposter. You are an imposter. Humans from all different parts of the world have been mixing, fucking, and mingling for a long damn time. Which is why, if you look very closely at my features, my nose looks like an English nose. When I went to London, I looked left I look right and I look straight ahead and I could not believe what was before me. I had never seen anyone with my nose until I was in London on the tube and it blew me the fuck away. Now, if you look at me in my pictures, it's clear that I'm colored, but a lot of my features, some of my features are African and some of my features are Native American. Some of my features are Caucasian. So you won't find what you believe you will find. And you are in denial. Your wishful thinking as is in denial. You are a mutt like the rest of us. Yeah, I said it. You are a mutt. You're not pure. You're not 100% Caucasian. You're a mixed breed just like the rest of us. Now, unlike you, I actually did a DNA test and I am 25% Caucasian. Now in the U.S., there was a law, probably don't know this, but there was a law that said if you had one drop of black blood, that makes you black. Well, damn, one drop makes you black? Then uh, you people know what I'm thinking, right? If one drop makes me black, then how many motherfucking drops make me white? Because I have more than one drop of white blood. Then shit, I'm white. I'm proud to be white. Shit, I'm probably more white than most of you motherfuckers in the alt-right movement. Because I have 25% Caucasian blood. European blood. So, I would like to say... Hello to my new brothers and sisters in the alt-right movement because you got yourself a token black. And I'm proud to be white. I'm proud to be white. I'm proud to be white. And I'm proud to be black also. Now, I can actually tell y'all ass what it is like to be marginalized and have to struggle hard, really, really hard to get out of socioeconomic disadvantage situation conditions that were created and sustained by racism, populism, and white nationalism. Does your marginalization compare to that? No, I didn't think so. So how do you think the Native Americans and Africans felt when they were being killed and stripped of everything that they believed in, that belonged to them. Their name, their religion, their food, their clothing, their culture. They were proud of their heritage too. So why was it okay to strip them of what they believed their traditional core values, what made them who they were? Why was it okay to strip them? You know why? Because it was about money. So if it was okay to strip millions and millions of other people 
away of what their history was and where their ancestors came from, then what makes you any motherfucking special or different? New people come. They come all the time. That's what happens. That's what happens. If you look in nature, shit changes. It constantly changes. And new people came to America. They thought they were in motherfucking India. But they were in America. Hence why Native Americans are called India. Because the motherfucker thought he was in India. But his goddamn ass was in America. But neither here nor there. And people start dying because of disease. And mingling and interacting. And their life changed. They had a problem with it. They were proud to be Native American. Just like you're proud to be white. So you will never get rid of all of us. And I can guarantee you that you don't want to work in the fields. You don't want to clean your own toilets and you don't want to take care of your own kids. So if you close the borders and put the USA in a bubble, if you're worried about extinction now, then closing yourself off will be putting like putting kerosene on a humongous bonfire. You are guaranteeing your extinction. You will be done for faster than you know. You will be just like the motherfucking dinosaurs. The dinosaurs that you believe that don't exist, even though you can see the fucking big ass bones and stuff hanging up in the museums. Those, you know, those, those things. You will be just like the dinosaurs. Something that was and now is not. You will be a non-motherfucking factor. You can't fuck with life. It is more powerful and mysterious than your stupid ass alt-right movement. All living beings are here for a purpose. All, not just you and what the fuck you think is important. All of us, what you want and desire is useless. You see, I tell my kids, everyone is entitled to an opinion, whether I think it's right or wrong. An opinion is like an asshole. And everyone has one. Yeah, I said it. An opinion is like an asshole and everyone has one. And guess what comes out of an asshole? If you haven't, if you don't know this, let me tell you what comes out of it. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Shit is what is unabsorbed by the body. It is food that couldn't be digested and has been rotted down by bacteria. Opinions are rotted bacteria and fested ex- excrement. That's what it is. It means nothing and everything. And when it's time to rid the planet of a race or a group of living beings, our creator will do it without the support of the alt-right movement. We are all puppets of something greater than the sum of all of living things. That's what I said. We are puppets of something that is greater than all living beings, plants, animals, dogs, horses, whatever. We are puppets. We're pawns. We're nothing. So check yourself and your expectations. The dinosaurs couldn't save themselves. They had to surrender to change. You fight change, but I guarantee you will lose. We merely are here to enjoy what's around us. And whatever you're doing is ruining the enjoyment for me, yourself, and others around. So let's make the most of this life because not one of us are guaranteed another life. To be honest, I wouldn't want to share another motherfucking life with your bitch ass anyway. So let's be, I don't don't want to come back and share it with you anyway. But if I happen to have to, let's make the most of what we have And live life with blessings and bliss, bitches. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM, but I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D or leave a comment on one of my posts. My next ridiculous episode is called Checks and No Balance. The release date for episode 10 is January 26, 2018. 
This is the only thing I want you to take away from episode nine. Don't listen for the truth. Look for it. Use your mind. Use your goddamn detective skills. Some folks will lie, cheat, manipulate, and deceive because they can. We are taught to trust blindly. As my mama says, and God we trust and everyone else pays cash. Trust is earned and not given. And when the shit has been earned, you need to do quality control every now and again to make sure that that person still deserves to be in your life. Because if they're not straight, you need to readily kick their ass to the curb while with the trash. Now give, give, give. My episode links to friends, family, associates, frenemies, Hell, give it to your enemies. Actually, I don't give a damn who you give it to. Just give the shit to people and bring laughter to others and show your love for this podcast. Tune in next week for another episode of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real on the ridiculous world we live in. If you would like to ask me a general question, provide your comments, or make a topic suggestion, then email me at difficultanddemanding at gmail.com. Please follow my podcast on Instagram at difficultanddemanding and Twitter at Mrs. D&D. And you know what? Fuck the please. Just do it. Okay?